I bought a vehicle that I never thought in a million years that I'd buy, and I absolutely love it. I'm gonna show you why in this video. So many reasons why this is a vehicle that sells so many, especially in Southern California. So let's take a look and go over all the reasons why a 2010 Toyota Prius with 197,000 miles has been so enjoyable for me to drive. All right guys, so this is a 2010 Toyota Prius with 197,000 miles. And if you look at the body, the body is in decent shape. Let me just show you some of the things that are wrong with it. This front fender and bumper do not match, as you can see, probably been repainted. The clear is coming off right here. You can see that. Um, I buffed the headlights, they were pretty yellow. So what I've done is put a Canaan filter in. I know, I don't know why, but I did. It kind of needed a new filter. So I just hope, hoping that I get, might get a little bit better gas mileage. Uh, buffed the headlights so they weren't as yellow. Um, they use synthetic oil from the factory. So it's 10,000 miles on the synthetic oil change. And um, it does have brand new tires. Make sure you air those up pretty high get a little extra miles per gallon um, so the front bumper is decent looking it's not too bad it looks like someone backed into a truck or something here so this could be changed um, the doors are actually pretty straight it's got this on the bumper I could fill this in with a little paint if I wanted to it's got some stuff on the on the back but essentially the sides of the car are decent uh, the body's fairly straight except for the bumpers which is kind of perfect for me because the Mustang was so brand new that, you know, this car is a city car. It's great. You can get it. It's okay if you get the car scratched and dinged up and you don't have to worry about it as much when you're driving the vehicle. So that's really nice. Um, now it does have 197,000 miles and people are going to think, well, isn't the battery going to go bad soon? So supposedly the battery was changed. He said you could look on the plug when you pull it out. That it, he said he had a tech look at it. Now, this is the guy that I bought the vehicle from, so who knows? I also said the water pump had been changed, and these are notorious from I think about the year 2007 to 2010 uh, for the water pump to go bad and then to burn a little bit of oil. So keep your eye on the oil level and make sure the vehicle does have enough oil. Um, other than that, they're pretty reliable from what I understand. I've seen some people that have a half a million miles on the original battery. So usually they last 150,000 miles, something like that. So this could be the original battery. It's just lasting a while. Um, or it could be replaced and it could go another 100,000 miles. I'm not sure. But if I want to get it changed, the battery, there's a place in West LA um, that will come to your work and change the battery uh, while you're, you know, in 30 minutes, while you're at lunch or whatever, or while you're working. And it's about a thousand bucks. Maybe it's $1,200 now since prices have gone up. But so if the battery does go bad, it's another cost of $1,000 or so to get that fixed. But um, the price that I paid for the vehicle, the price was right. So 2010 was the first year of the next generation. And the miles per gallon in the city went up a couple. I believe it's either 51 city or 50 city, something like that. Um, in real world testing, I've gotten 48 on one tank and 45 in the other. So I expect to probably get about 45 if I'm just driving it kind of normal which is kind of fast in the city because everyone accelerates really fast from stoplight so it is a CVT transmission it's a 1.8 liter hybrid gas um, with a CVT transmission continuously variable transmission um, it makes it really easy to drive you just sit back and step on the gas pedal and it's very smooth um, and we can go over some of the driving stuff in a little bit but I just wanted to show you the outside of the car and talk about the vehicle in general so let's go inside and look at some of the stuff it does have that keyless entry so all you have to do is put your hand on the door and it unlocks for you um, it's all auto down and up which is nice this is I believe the level one I believe they go all the way up to four or five so this just has your regular cloth very basic um, it does not it does have Bluetooth actually but in order for, well, it doesn't have Bluetooth. It has for your cell phone for calling only. You can't play Pandora. So what I've done is plug this dude in. This uses your, it's a FM 
translator or I'm not sure what it's called but I can listen to Pandora through that now um, some of the features are you know it's keyless start you just press on the brake and you can fire it up like that it says welcome to Prius now the gauge cluster is really cool and we'll go over that later when we're driving but essentially you can check everything out from right here I don't know how well you can see that but let's just go through some of the stuff so at the bottom right is my trip I've gone 1900 miles since I bought the vehicle and the miles per gallon in that 1900 miles is 47 miles per gallon my average speed is 22 miles per hour I have 204 miles estimated until the tank is empty and there's 199,204 miles on this vehicle currently on this trip 252 miles at 45 miles per gallon 19 mile an hour speed so I've been going slow so another cool thing that was new on this uh, year model for the next generation is when you pl place your finger on this you'll get the dash will light up so all you have to do is place your finger right here and then if you see in the background I don't know if you can see that but it's very sensitive touchpad so you don't have to it's almost like a heads-up display except it's definitely not on the uh, glass and that just you can just control it just allows you to see where your fingers are so you don't have to look down at the steering wheel that's the, that's what that was about now when you're driving you can change these drive modes so there's your battery on the left and we'll go over this as we start driving but that's the average on my the last tanks that I've had um, one two three four five tanks and they've all averaged about 48 to 50 miles per gallon which is pretty awesome so, and we'll look at this stuff when we're driving. I just want to go over the inside of the vehicle. Uh, just regular CD player, AM, FM, stereo. The air conditioner still works really well. You do have electric vehicle mode. I believe that's what that stands for now. So it's in EV mode now, and the car is actually running right now. So I could take off if I wanted to. You don't hear anything, obviously, but um, as you see, we're rolling. And you, use, you can use EV mode when you are going up to 24 miles an hour you just don't want to over accelerate or kick the gas engine back on but basically if you're moving the car in the parking garage or if you're in a, a zone that's like 15 miles per hour or 15 to 30 um, as long as you're not going over I think 24 miles per hour it'll stay in that electric um, battery only um, using no gasoline and as long as the battery's charged up so that's fun I like to play with that also you have eco mode that you can use I pretty much always keep it in eco mode basically the throttle tip in is less aggressive so if you put it in power mode as soon as you and it says power mode you can turn EV off put it in power mode essentially what happens is that just the throttle map is um, the throttle position and the way they calibrate it is way more aggressive so um, that's what that is no heater or cooled seats, no leather here, no premium sound system, no sunroof. Um, it does have this cool place to put your sunglasses in here. It does have um, these cool dome lights. I just use my garage door opener right here. Um, another cool thing about the inside of the vehicle is you can put all this cool stuff right here. It's got this nice flat area and this is nice and big inside here. Another cool area is this down here. Um, it's just, just a nice big flat. Oh, we got a bug. What kind of bug? We got some beetle. We've got a nice big flat area that you can put your phone, your wallet. I've actually put coffee mugs down there. I know. I know. But um, it tastes so much better if you have a big mug because you can smell the coffee. So it's messy, but if you've got a Prius, who cares? That's, that's why the Prius is fun because who cares? It's a Prius. Um, some things that I've known with such a high mileage vehicle is that I didn't really expect but after you think about it oh 200,000 miles there's a lot of seat time hours and what happens is things like this get worn out the steering wheel and I had to clean the steering wheel and it was disgusting it was so dirty so let's go over the functionality of the vehicle these seats are pretty comfortable you got a lot of headroom and essentially you can just sit back and relax it does have you know dimming automatic mirrors you've got your headlights here which I did replace with some more powerful because these unless you have the premium I think the 
the three or the four, you don't get the expensive headlights. And um, I could be wrong on that, but I'm I'm not sure. But basically, I just put new headlights in because the the ones that were in it were are weak. So I upgraded those. You do have a rear wiper, um, a blank something here because I don't have all the features. Now you can get these with a solar sunroof. So the sunroof will be solar powered and what it does is when the car's sitting in the sun and you're not in it, just parked, basically it will recirculate some air or the air conditioning I think and keep the inside of the vehicle fairly cool while it's sitting, which is, it's a cool feature. Maybe on the next one, um, I'll get one of those, but basically, um, I got this car for so cheap, uh, the other vehicles in this basically year model were going for like t double the price of this vehicle, 10000 so almost basically double. So I, I wanted to take get one for half price, and, and that's the way it made sense to me. I don't want to spend that much on a Prius, but now that I know that it's so good, I probably will spend that much in the future. Um, it does have some cool things, functional things like here. Another thing that I thought was cool is that you can actually hold on to this. You have one of these on the driver's side and the passenger side. You got your um, airbags here. Something cool is that you can actually sleep. If you lay down these seats, they go way far forward and I'll show you. And you can sleep in the back. Uh, a full size mountain bike will go in the back and you actually have a ton of space. So let me just show you how far forward this will go. This goes way forward. This goes way forward. You can you can sit back here and almost change. I've, I've changed clothes plenty of time. Look how much space I have right here. It's tons of space. I can sit with my legs almost completely straight out. Um, you got these pockets back here. This thing is cool. It slides up, opens flat like this. So really, tons and tons of room. So what a lot of people do, if they're gonna sleep in the Prius, they'll put a cooler right here, a kind of a tall cooler, and they'll lay a pillow so that when they lay these back seats flat, it's flat all the way down. And that's literally it. Um, all you have to do is lay these seats down and you've got lots of space. It's actually really good for road tripping and camping if you, if you wanna sleep in the back. Let me show you how these seats lay down. These just lay flat down like that. And if you have a cooler, you can set that there and you're pretty much flat. The trunk, you just have a press button here. This thing goes pretty far up. I just have water, so if I go out in the desert, I have plenty of water with me. Um, a little bit of motor oil just in case that engine, if it does burn oil. This is nice when you do get groceries and put them in the trunk that they don't get, uh, don't get your ice cream melted. Put that over there. That's pretty much it. It's pretty spacious. I can get in here with the seats up, no problem. Um, it does have two pull handles, which is very convenient on both sides. So it's getting, like I said before, it does get about 45 if you drive pretty normal slash fairly aggressive. Um, now if, when I babied it, I got 48 miles per gallon and I'm gonna show you the tricks on how to kind of baby the vehicle. And there's another mode, B, which is for braking. Uh, when you're going downhill, it'll engine brake and regenerate that uh, power into the battery. Um, so let's take it for a spin and I want to show you how the vehicle drives. So this car didn't have any floor mats in it. I had leftover factory leftover floor mats from the Fiesta ST before I sold it. And they actually fit these clips perfectly and they go right in. Uh, pop the hood is here. You, you still have a pull handle for the, for the gas. And then you have the push on and push off emergency brake essentially the vehicle is just very 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 easy to drive um, I'm gonna put it in reverse we're in reverse you just hear some beeping that's basically it and the put an eco mode and we're ready to go it gives you a little bit of a beep when you are in reverse just to let you know that you're in reverse because the vehicle is so quiet that you don't even know 
that it's um i guess that's why they're doing that it's because the vehicle's essentially so quiet so off in the prius buckle up for safety and we're gonna basically we're in a super fancy neighborhood up here by a state park in southern california and this is my favorite place to go hiking so the gas engine is not running yet and you can the way i tell is i look at that mile per hour miles per gallon gauge it says 100 there when it's all the way up and you don't as long as you don't hear the gas powered engine running you know it's not running you could also go to your display right here and check see how the arrows are going to the i don't know what that little thing's called it's basically between the engine and the battery and it converts the power from the engine to the battery so everything's going from the wheels now we're going from the battery back to the wheels so that would be acceleration you're using battery power to move the vehicle when i let off the gas it's going to reverse so it's taking the it's taking the power it's taking the energy from the vehicle that's moving and charging the battery back up now when i accelerate it does the reverse of that so we're going downhill we're getting i don't know how many miles per gallon lots of miles per gallon because the gas powered engine's not running and that's why this car is fun because you can constantly just check out the miles per gallon and you're always looking at the gauge you're always trying to maximize fuel efficiency it's just kind of fun okay the vehicle actually only weighs about 2800 pounds 3000 pounds in the max um, the steering is very light it's just so easy to drive and you don't care people and the Mustang people look at you and you feel like you're putting on a show everywhere you go. It's loud, it's shiny black. This vehicle essentially is just quiet. It's ugly. I know it's ugly. But uh, essentially, it's just very, very easy to drive. The steering wheel is very light. It's actually fun to drive because the vehicle is so light. It feels, it feels fun to drive. It's not heavy, very lightweight vehicle. Um, so... We're getting over 100 miles per gallon. We're going downhill and the gas powered engine still not running. Uh, look at the beautiful view and these beautiful houses. And let's show you the B mode. We're gonna kick this dude down in B. And if you look at the charge button, it's charging the battery, it's engine braking. So it's using the engine to recharge that battery. Let's put it back into D. I'm just gonna use my brakes. Your brakes work better if you, I'm gonna let off the brake and then push the brake again. See how the charge button's going down and up, down and up? So essentially, when you use the brakes, it charges the battery. When you're coasting, it charges the battery. And that's how that works. Um, I can get 500 miles to one tank and it cost me about $37 to fill up this tank. Pretty affordable. So something else I wanted to talk about this vehicle is the fact that there's not very much attachment to this vehicle because it's such a used kind of beat up vehicle. The front and back bumpers are beat up. It's super easy to just park wherever you want. Who cares if someone backs into it? I'm not worried about it. The bumpers already are already beat up a little bit. Um, and it's so much better to drive that kind of vehicle every day if you don't care, if you don't have to worry about parking it in the middle, like, you know, away from all the vehicles. When I go to the grocery store, I just whip the car in, park it kind of wherever. I mean, I still park it away from people, but if I come out and someone's got the door up against it while they're loading their groceries, I don't care that much. With the Mustang, I would get upset. And with this car, I'm just, I just don't care. So it's really nice to have a vehicle that you can just get in with your dirty shoes after hiking and just say, okay, I'll vacuum that dirt out later. Where in the Mustang, I'd be like, oh gosh, don't get sand in the car. So everyone needs a vehicle that they're not attached to. That way you can actually use it and have fun and everything's not stressful. Oh, don't get the car dirty. Don't, don't get the dog in the car. Don't get, you know, don't smush French fries in the seats or whatever. So it's just really nice to have one of those vehicles again that you're not attached to. So less attachment, less suffering. Okay, so. What else are we gonna talk about here? Should we do a zero to 60 run? All right guys, here we are, zero to 60. Not bad. That 
it's definitely downhill, but anyways, this is the only place I can do it that's fairly secluded and um, seems somewhat safe to do that. So there you go. Car has plenty of power. I don't wish the Prius had more power. Maybe if like you're on the interstate and you really want to get past somebody, but it's got more than enough power. It'll cruise at 70, 80 miles an hour, no problem. So, um, and it actually has, it feels like it has a decent amount of torque because of the CVT. It always keeps that engine in the power band. So in all honesty, the car gets around just fine. It actually handles these canyon roads, kind of these, it, it actually is fun to drive. I would never in a million years thought I'd say this, but the Mustang is such a big, heavy vehicle that when you drive these little vehicles, they feel very fun to drive. Um, almost like the Fiesta ST. Uh, I'm not comparing it to the Fiesta ST, but they were about the same weight. And um, this has a very soft suspension with soft seats and soft tires, but uh, you understand what I'm trying to say is that these, these lightweight vehicles are, there's just something about them, man. There's just something about them. So I get it why you guys drive the uh, Miatas and the lightweight vehicles because um, they're more fun to drive in some regard. I like big horsepower cars too, but there's just something about lightweight vehicles. Straight why this vehicle gets 50 miles per gallon in the city. Um, we're cruising in traffic, and as long as I keep this this bar below the halfway mark, if you see there, we're going to be over 100 miles per gallon. So I'm cruising in traffic. Once I'm up to speed, all I'm going to do is pulse and glide, baby, pulse and glide. That means basically use the accelerator and the gas-powered engine to get up to speed, and then 100% off the accelerator, and then back on to the accelerator just a little bit. And that will cause, as long as you're under about 44 miles per hour, that will cause that um, electric motor to maintain your speed with the battery power and the gas powered engine will not run. So we're gonna take off from a red light. I'm gonna use the accelerator to get up to speed and then I'm gonna let off and then get back on the gas and it'll just be um, battery powered that will essentially chop a that will get me, um, and that's that's how that works. So we're accelerating. I'm just gonna use battery. As long as you don't cross that, I'm just gonna accelerate with the battery right now. 15 miles an hour, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're in traffic, so I can do that. So I didn't even use the gas powered, I didn't even use gas to accelerate that time. And then when I'm using the brakes, it's gonna recharge that battery a little bit. Not as much as the energy that I just used, but so eventually after you do this cycle, we'll have to start the engine to charge the battery because your brakes aren't generating enough um, energy to charge that battery up as much as you're using it. But I'm gonna accelerate again, just because we're in stop and go traffic. So I don't need to use, I don't need to use the gas powered engine to get me going. And that's why this car can get such good gas mileage in the city. So in the Mustang, I'd be getting real life, I'd be getting about 10 miles per gallon, and right now I'm getting 50. So, you know, every 500 you spend on gas, you spend 100 in this. So that's why it's fun to drive in the city, because you're saving money. All right. Okay, so the cost of ownership on this vehicle is so low. The brakes sometimes last over 100,000 miles or the lifetime of the vehicle, I've heard. There's no cost. You literally just change the oil on the vehicle. Um, very, very, very low maintenance. The batteries do go bad every 10 years, 150,000 miles, but some people have gone 300,000, 400,000 miles on the original battery. So um, don't worry too much about that, to be honest. And it's a Toyota at the end of the day. It's a Toyota. Um, like I said, it cost me about $37 with California gas prices, 87 octane to fill up about, um, I'd say nine gallons or 10 gallons of gas. And I have to fill it up every 450 miles, something like that. And um, so filling up, it takes less of your time because you can go 450 miles before you fill up. So spend less time at the gas station. When you fill up, it costs a lot less because you have to use 87. And then you're filling up not as frequently. So um, the Mustang cost me about $400 a month to drive in gas. This cost me about $100 a month to drive the Land Cruiser cost me about $500 a month to drive in gas. And this, like I said, is about $100 um, a month or maybe a little more, 125, something like that. So essentially it's kind of fun to drive. 
it's extremely easy to drive I'm not attached to it I'm very carefree about driving this vehicle the cost of it is very low I can stick my mountain bike in the back I can sleep in the back if I need to um, it's just a cool car it's very reliable and I never thought I'd say that but here we are I think everyone should have a Prius to beat around um, traffic on your day-to-day -day activities because it's a nice turbo Porsche oh they're so nice the new the new turbo Porsches um, so I just really think that everyone should have one of these cars in their fleet at the cost that they are five to ten thousand dollars and you save so much in gas you could save a few thousand dollars the first year just in gas and it, the vehicle would pay for itself so if you think about it every month that I drive this versus the Land Cruiser I save four hundred dollars if you multiply that times 12 that's five grand so the vehicle would pay for itself in one year essentially so something to think about I know it's not very good looking and I know um, it's slow compared to the Mustang but there's something about it being carefree careless and enjoyable uh, to drive and know that you're saving money every time you're driving the vehicle that makes it more enjoyable so thanks for watching if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button hit the thumbs up if you like it if you disagree hit the um, or comment just comment let me know what you think or hit the thumbs down but let me know what you think do you have a Prius are you looking to get one um, I'm sure I've left some things out like pretty sure the whole vehicle interior is made of recycled materials and um, there's a lot of other cool things that I've left out about the drive modes and um, I'm sure I've left lots of stuff out as I do but I'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section alright guys thanks for watching have a great day